Welcome back. We've been talking with Grammy-winning singer and songwriter Michelle Branch in the first TV interview since she announced last month that she and her husband had planned to divorce. And now the big news is that they're reconciling. She's moving forward with her music and much more. As I said, you worked on a song with your husband in this, and you've now announced this reconciliation. Now I'm curious about the title of the album, The Trouble with Fever. What is that about? Yeah, we made this uh, record during lockdown. We were home in Nashville. We're really fortunate we have a studio at our house, mm -hmm. and um, we were trying to figure out a way to be productive at the house with kids and, you know, in quarantine. So we started this record. Um, so the, the thought of fever was definitely on my mind yeah. as I was writing this record. Um, but it's really about kind of cabin fever, those sleepless nights, yeah. like thinking about the past and not being able to sleep, thinking about the future, worrying, you know, that was definitely, a lot of that was happening in 2020. Yeah, yeah. a lot, we can all relate to that. <laughs> we all had a fever and happy it's kind of breaking now at yeah. this point. But so you're in this world, you're in the home, family, baby, pressure, and this spills out of you. There's this song on the album that you're gonna perform a little bit later, Not My Lover. What's the story behind that song? Not My Lover, I started writing in 2017 um, when I was getting ready to tour for my last record that was coming out. And it was a chorus that I had in my brain that just wouldn't let go. I kept saying, you're not my lover, you're not my lover. And I never wrote the verses to it. Um, and it kind of had, like, in my mind, I was like, I, I want to write a Fleetwood Mac song. <laughs> like, try to write a Fleetwood Mac song. And so it wasn't until 2020 when we were home and gifted so much time uh, that Patrick suggested that we go in the studio and yeah. dig up some of the old scratch ideas I had. And I was like, oh, I still remember that yeah. song. Like, I should probably try to finish this. Um, and it's, it's just funny sometimes how songs happen because so many people are like, that sounds relevant to your life now. And I'm like, no, I well, promise. What, like, I wrote it in I'm 2017. I'm happy you said that because when I saw, like, <laughs> you are not my lover, and then I'm like, wait a minute, that tweet <laughs> is going on here. But it has nothing to do with the current things. I, I can't help it, but I just love, I, I write about love. I've, yeah. I've always written about relationships, whether they're mine, my friends, uh, something I read or watch or, you know, I mean. Yeah, that's where the best the music is. Life is the best about. music. You know, it's interesting too, because I'm sure you know, as a songwriter, people look for tea leaves. Oh right? yeah. You write a song and suddenly your personal life is in the headlines and they're like, wait, yeah. uh, is that, who is this? It, it, <laughs> does that add to pressure, especially now? No, I, I actually had a, a friend of mine tell me like initially, like, Go do what you do best. Go write, go write music about this. Heal your heart. Someone out there will be listening and you'll be able to help them through That's this. It. Lemonade, Beyonce's masterpiece, <laughs> yeah. was a, a whole storyline <laughs> similar, they say, to this. So with you, are you writing music now? I know you're focused on this album and in yeah. this moment, but because you're such a prolific songwriter, are you documenting what's happening and how you feel now for the next project? I haven't really had the luxury of writing yet. Um, you know, gearing up for this tour and having kids uh, keeps me quite busy, yeah. but I can feel some songs in the waiting room, like yeah. swirling around in my brain. I just know the minute I have time to sit down, it's gonna kind of just come You mentioned the kids out. and you've got two um, babies and then you have a 17 year old. 17 year old, wow. yeah. What, I always wonder now being a parent in the public eye too, you know, your life is out there. Did you talk to your 17-year-old about all of this beforehand, or oh, you just hope that yeah. no one turns on social media? And <laughs> no, I have a really great relationship with my 17-year-old, um, and she, you know, she, you can't get anything past kids. <laughs> no, you first cannot. First of all, so I, all, like I said earlier, like all I could do is be honest with yeah. what was going on, and, um, and yeah, she was so supportive and oh. sweet and. Then she's like, hey, um, can I have the keys to the car? <laughs> right, they are quick to move on. <laughs> I know you told Billboard magazine that this tour is going to make space for new work. You said, I have a lot of stuff <laughs> I want to <laughs> write about now. You yeah. want to tell all of it, this in music. I am an oversharer. That's okay. That's I why can't... this show is called Real Raw No Edit. <laughs> I can't help myself. I. That's just how I am. That's who I am, who I've always been. I've learned maybe not to share too much. <laughs> Did you get off but... social media after this? No. Oh my gosh. <laughs> 
but I've learned. You've learned. To Good. take my trigger happy, you know, thumbs away. I like that. Coming up, <laughs> Michelle talks about her career and what's next after the break. Welcome back. We're having a real raw, non, not edited conversation with singer songwriter Michelle Branch. And Michelle, we were talking, you're on tour, yes. eight stops. Um, when you were 17 years old, Madonna signed you to her record label, Maverick. You were 17 at the time. Look, there's Madonna, as if we don't all know who, how Madonna looks there. That's her. That's what she looks like. I, you know. were, I think, one of the first female artists to run her own entertainment company. This experience in this world at 17, and now here you are, is it what you dreamt? Was this your wildest dream? That's been the theme for this month's show. Oh, my gosh. Yes. I, I wanted to be a musician yeah. ever since I was teeny tiny. It's the only thing that I ever really thought I would be doing or wanted to be doing. Um, and the fact that I'm able to now, like 20 plus years later, still be making music yeah. has been, I mean, such a gift. Yeah, very, it is. And the other gifts are the kids. You're on tour in the commercial break we were talking. I don't want to tell your business, but you're <laughs> breastfeeding, which yeah. you said. And on tour with a baby. Oh, yeah. <laughs> trying to get childcare to fly in and all the, oh, yeah. the things that go it along It takes with a it. village. Yeah. So my village is just on a tour bus. Yeah. It's just, and moving every day. <laughs> um, you know, sometimes when, when, especially entertainers or it, women in general, once you have children, people often feel like, oh, okay, they can't do both. And yeah. we can't juggle it all. But how do you maintain uh, the focus? Because I have to tell you, some days it's hard for me. I'm looking at my watch to see what note came from my oh, child's yeah. school. You, you're, you feel like you're needing to be everywhere and you do, but if you succumb to that, you get overwhelmed. Oh yeah, it's hard. I mean, today I've been looking at my phone about 500 times to be like, is the baby okay? Did she take a <laughs> bottle? How's she doing? Mom's at work. Um, but you know, it's no different than any working yeah, parent. Yeah, absolutely. It no really different. isn't. Um, I'm fortunate that I get to take her on tour with me and that I have, you know, uh, that I'm able to have help. Yeah. Do what I still love. Yeah, well, you're doing what you love. You're going out on tour, and you have a special treat for us. You're going to perform after yes. the break a song you've never performed on TV. Such an honor that you're doing that. And before your performance, I just want to say thank you so much, because as I said, I walked in. There are paparazzi all outside. I know it is not easy. Life is complicated. The journey is not one um, that's uh, to be taken for granted, the ups and downs, and I appreciate you trusting me to talk with me today. Thank you.